here we go getting ready to paint this wall look at the state of it needs a bit of sorting out clear away all the plant matter you'll want that out of the way hello Darcy how are you doing what are you doing up there give the wall a fairly good scrape over this wall was jet washed yesterday to take away the paint that was flaking away the wall had previously been painted with an interior paint which brightened up the wall nicely but it didn't last I've just taken off the obviously loose paint. There isn't much because the jet wash did the hard work. This is a good little scraper, probably one of the best in my collection. But I got it from ESK, a local discount store that has a good amount of tools and hardware at bargain prices. It's called a painter's tool and I found it really useful. I've included a link below to one I found online that looks really useful and it's titanium. The one I have isn't and I wanted a stronger one that can handle the pressure of opening paint pots without feeling like it's going to bend out of shape any second. Uh, I'm not going too crazy, it's a garden wall and it's going to need repainting next year. Here we go, found some eye hooks in the wall, left from a previous job, I don't know what it was, before my time. Uh, I haven't got any exterior filler, normally I'd exterior filler that, but um, we're not going to today. This one was a little stiff, had to find something to get it out. Simple screwdriver through the hole, give it a twist, easy peasy, job done. Put a little extra paint in there. We're not filling in the hole, but you want to try and cover it up a bit. Paint is not filler. I'm gonna start off doing the side edges. I've got dust sheets down to catch any wayward paint. They need to stay in place till later. If I do the bottom edge now, I'll have to pull out, pull the dust sheet away from the edge, and I couldn't put it back again against the wet paint. There you are again, Darcy. I don't think you can join in. Something about the curiosity of cats they always get nosy when you're painting, and often manage to get it on themselves. Silly cats. Where the fence post joins the wall, we have a small gap, about a centimetre or a third of an inch, perhaps less in places. With my brush against the wall, I push a little bit harder towards the wall, which will make the bristles fan out a bit, and then slide the edge of the fanned out brush into the space, as close as possible, trying not to touch the post. Fence is a job for a different day, and a different paint. Ah, you'll see what I mean about cats now. They seem to come out of the woodwork. There's another one. That's Ginger Tom from down the road. He's Darcy's kitten's dad. That's the left side done. Moving over to the right hand side now. Nice and quickly get that done. You'll see on this side we've got a little bit less space between the wall and the wood. Nice and close. Keep that line straight. Ah, you'll see me doing this quite often, especially on bigger jobs. I'm rolling straight from bucket. It makes a lot less mess with extra tools, and if you're careful, you, you can keep it clean. Give your roller a good coat, all the way round. And make sure you scrape it off on the edge of the bucket as you move it away, otherwise it'll drip everywhere. This is why we didn't do the top edge, because you can use the roller. Keep your roller flat, and just let it overlap by an inch, two inches, and push it into the corner. That'll be fine. Right, it's masonry paint, it's got to go on fairly thick, it's going to make a, a nice weather shield against the conditions outside. Not overly thick though, you don't want it all running down the wall as you move away. Put it on thickly and spread it about, nice even coat all over. And when I was taught to roll, I was taught to roll from the top to the bottom, and that works, that works just as well, but you'll find it fatigues the body very quickly. There we go, rolling from bucket again. So you'll find me rolling in, in stages, I roll half the top and then down to the bottom, half the top and then down to the bottom. It's a lot easier on the body. And once you're consistently rolling, it doesn't make any difference at the end of the job. Just make sure you've got a nice, smooth, even coat all over. Looking like that, nice and shiny. There you go, just let that roller go over that top edge, just by an inch or two. Just give it a little extra pressure on the corner and go on fine. There you go, a little bit of left-handed roller in. You end up being a bit ambidextrous. As a painter, you have to use both hands sometimes. There we go, just get that bit done. Splendid, splendid. Oh, oh, a little bit extra there. We'll have that over there, shall we? Fantastic. Right, there we go, getting down to that bottom left hand corner now. Started off on the right, I rolled the top, rolled down to the bottom. I've done a little bit and then moved on on the top and the bottom of the left hand side. And you'll find I've missed out most of the centre. I'll come back to that. It just makes for a more even consistent coat when you're in the middle of the wall. You can see the left and right hand side. See how it's blending in together. 
Just give that a push round, nice and smooth. Looks a little clumsy here if you look at that, a big slop of paint on the wall. But there we go, you move through it and you spread it around. You can keep going back to a tray, getting a little bit of paint on the roller, go back to the wall. I prefer to kind of make a reservoir on the wall. I take a well loaded roller, dump it on the wall and then spread it around from there. It's much quicker and as long as you're careful to check that you've moved your reservoirs, not just left them hanging there, you end up with a nice, smooth, even, consistent coating. There we go, just get that all finished. Right, you can see how thickly I'm dumping it on. It's a masonry paint, it's got to get in all those cracks and gaps and holes. And spread it around. Here we go, getting down to that bottom edge now. We've done all the wall above it, we haven't got to worry about the roller flicking and spraying anymore. So now we can move the dust sheet away from the edge of the wall and we can start our cutting in. Take your time, nice and slowly, move the debris out of the way, keep the brush out of the mud, nice and high. Place it against the wall, a little bit of pressure so it fans out, you'll be able to get right down as close as you can without actually touching the muck. It'll be fine, it'll be fine, take your time. There you go, easy peasy. If you make any drips or drops, splats or splutters, then clean them up straight away. It's masonry paint and it will stick to anything. It'll stick to your slabs, concrete, brickwork. Once it dries, it's difficult to move. Get it done straight away. Any old spray soap in a bottle will do. Here I'm using an elbow grease, which isn't really required, but I keep it round for oil-based paints. Red and yellow and pink and green, orange and purple and blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. As I was saying before I interrupted myself with my singing there whilst I was working, um, I'm using the elbow grease, it's got a grease eater in it. It's fairly good at moving oil-based drips and drops. It won't clean up the whole lot if you make a big spill. You need a white spirit or something for that. Getting towards the end of the day now. Not too worried about the paint, that's gonna set well overnight. Hopefully well enough to take a masking tape ready for its next job. This is part of a bigger project than just painting this little wall. You'll be able to check that out in my very next video. There we go, nice and close, nice and close, all the way back, finish it off. Nice clean job, nice white go. wall. You've been watching my how to paint an external wall video. Ready for my next project, which I can't wait to upload. It was a lot more fun than painting white on white. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, click like. If you want to see my next video, click subscribe. It's March 2020. We are in COVID-19 lockdown. We are stuck at home. And these are the things I'm doing to keep myself entertained and to stay off the streets. Stay safe, everybody. Look after yourselves, look after your family. I'll see you again.